This is a 2018 Ford Escape and it needs some help. Okay, quick discussion before we get started. The code on this car, there's only one, and it is P0301. It's both locked in and pending. That is a misfire on cylinder number one. Now, the seller stated that he took it and had it diagnosed, and it had a head gasket issue. There's some coolant in cylinder number one, so we're going to take a look at that. I do know, this is a 2.0 liter, I do know that the 1.5 liters have been suffering... Head gasket failures due to the design of the block. There's like a, a slit that is cut for coolant passage in between each cylinder. So I haven't read anything on the 2.0s having that issue, but I know that the 1.5s have a technical service bulletin on that. So let's uh, let's get this down here where we can uh, look inside of a cylinder and scope it out. First off, I do want to get some stuff out of my way. We're going to get this engine cover off and we're going to get this cowling up here, these windshield wipers and this cowling. I'm gonna take that off. All right, windshield wipers and cowling are off, and so is the engine cover. To get the cowling off, it's pretty easy. There are two uh, Torx bolts in this uh, reservoir for the brake master cylinder. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you have uh, a bunch of clips in the front. Let me show you what one of those looks like. There you go, you got these clips holding the upper part of the cowling to the lower part of the cowling all along it, so pop those off. Once you get those off, you can pop the upper portion of the cowling off. It's uh, connected in here through all these little slots here. Just pop that out and pull it off. And then the bottom piece of the cowling, uh, super easy, there's a bolt here. Uh, another bolt uh, was towards the back, maybe around here somewhere. And uh, same thing on this side, you got a bolt here. And then, uh, oh, yeah, right here, one towards the back. Those four bolts, and then slide the lower portion of the cowling out and uh, place it off to the side. So if you watched my uh, Land Rover Discovery video, this should look pretty familiar to you. It's essentially the same engine, okay? First cylinder, cylinder one here. I'm going to disconnect this, pull this coil pack out, pull the spark plug out, and stick a, uh, a camera down there and see what it looks like in cylinder number one. Okay, here we are. The coil pack off of uh, cylinder one and cylinder two, and I got both spark plugs out of cylinder one and two, so you can see a comparison difference here. So on initial inspection here, um, cylinder one did not look terrible, um, at least the, the, the top of the piston. But it's hard to hard to show this taking a a picture of a picture here. But uh, right here. And uh, in some other areas, you can tell that it's uh, a little damp, right? Damp looking. Let's look at uh, cylinder two. And I, again, I apologize for how difficult this is to see, but cylinder two is as dry as a bone on top. So there is some dampness in uh, cylinder number one. And here's another good thing to compare. This is the spark plug from cylinder one. You can see it's a lot darker, uh, a lot more carbon buildup from some misfires. And then right here, uh, this is cylinder number two. This is a better looking spark plug here. Uh, you can also see on top the, the difference of the uh, the colors there. More black, a little bit more brown here. This is uh, from a good firing cylinder right here. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get this thing apart. Let's get all the uh, air intake stuff off next. I got the air intake stuff off. You can start over here, take the top of the box off with uh, four 10 millimeter screws once that is off. Uh, there is a, a rubber stopper support guy here, whatever you want to call that. Uh, get that off. Uh, loosen up the hose clamp that is on the main air intake pipe coming up here. Uh, disconnect the mass airflow sensor. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you'll be able to just pull this, pull the box out. It just sits in there by friction and gravity. There's some rubber grommets here, one there. Uh, there's one underneath here. And basically you just pop that thing out. Then to get the main air intake pipe off, you got a few things you got to worry about. It's uh, bolted right here on the top of the vacuum pump, bolted over here on the valve cover, and then there's a uh, ventilation hose here in the back. Then after this is out, uh, you'll have a couple vacuum lines up front, looks like for the uh, gas tank ventilation 
purge lines. So those are out. This is the hardest part of it here. Back underneath here, this hose has got a clamp on it. You got to get that off. That's kind of tough. And then there'll be a seven millimeter hose clamp around this that you got to kind of just reach down here and get that hose clamp off. And after that, you just uh, work this thing loose and, and out. Now let's take the rest of this junk off up top here. I got some uh, electrical lines, things of that nature. We'll get this all cleaned up so we can uh, get this valve cover off. That'll include taking these three uh, and four coil packs out. That'll be next. We're gonna get this stuff off. All right, a lot of stuff has come off. The valve cover is obviously off. The vacuum pump over here is off. Electrical lines are kind of up and out of the way. I took the fuel pump off over here, and you can see I just kind of hung the electrical wires uh, around that just to get all that out of the way um, to get the valve cover off. Hey, let's take a quick timeout. Um, I know I just took a lot of stuff off and really didn't explain how to get it off. Well, I've already done this on another engine. I've already filmed it, already explained it on a Discovery Sport. Very similar. So I'm gonna link uh, those videos, should have them up over here in the corner. If not, they'll be down also uh, for sure down in the condition description below. So you might want to click on those to get to this point here. Now with that engine, I didn't take the cylinder head off. So I will be showing that with this engine here. And any differences that I see, I will definitely film with this. Okay, let's move on. Here's one of the first differences. Uh, right here, there's a coolant line bolted in here. I've already taken the bolt out. Uh, this line is a hard line and is on one of the uh, fuel pump bracket housing uh, studs in the back there. So this is going to have to come out to get the rest of this housing off. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and drain the coolant. Now's a good time to drain the coolant. Okay, draining the coolant. Underneath here, I'm going to take this belly pan off. Right. Around here, there's a bunch of uh, Torx bolts. I'm going to go around there and take those off. Looks like there's some 8 or 7 millimeter bolts here. Take all the bolts off that hold uh, this fabric piece on, this belly pan. Let's get that off. Okay, the belly pan is off. And there's really no good radiator drain. I don't think I can really even film up here. There's just no plug. I thought I read that there was a plug underneath here, but I am just not seeing it. Just not seeing a drain plug on the bottom of this radiator. So, uh, we're going to do this the messy way. In effort to take off as little as possible, um, this water outlet pipe is going to have to come off to get the cylinder head off. So, I'm just unbolting that. Let's drain it that way. Okay, back to what we originally wanted to get off. This, uh, this pipe back here, this hard line comes around here. Uh, again, it's on a bracket like this on the back side of this housing, and it comes to uh, this right here. Okay, you see this bracket here that's going towards that uh, threaded stud in the back. Follow that line around, and it comes, and it's got a uh, crimped connection here. So we could take this off here, but I'm just going to try to unbolt this or pop it out of here, and then just lay this off to the side over here. Right, that's a little struggle that was in there, but I uh, got it out, and like I said, I just kind of finagled it out, and here it is. It's laying off to the side over here. All right, now we can get this, uh, let's get this fuel pump housing out the rest of the way. I've already got most of the bolts out. Uh, it's just these uh, 13 millimeter uh, nuts here on a threaded stud. Okay, and there's the fuel pump housing off. Let's go ahead and take the time while we're back here and get these uh, last two cam caps off. It's just got some 10 millimeter bolts on here and uh, we'll pop these off. Okay, we got those back couple cam caps off. Let's uh, let's keep working around here. If you see my logic here, I'm kind of starting uh, here at the, the fuel pump. After we got like, you know, all this main stuff off, I'm starting back here kind of at the fuel pump and we'll be working our, our way around here clockwise. So the next thing we got to do is take this intake off. There are a couple differences between this and the Discovery Sport. Uh, mainly how these uh, evap lines are attached. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go ahead and take this hose clamp off right here. It's the one of the overmost ones right under the throttle body. I'm going to cut this zip tie right here. 
and I'm going to let the um, red looking evap line here uh, that turns into uh, that green clip down there stay with the intake uh, I'm sorry with the intake pipe below this other one here that I'm touching here is going to come out with the intake uh, it comes over here uh, into this big long guy here and is the uh, other gray end of this I disconnected it from its connection back there uh, before you can even see any of that, there's this beauty cover on top of here. It's literally just a pin. You got a pole here. It's got some kind of friction tab on the back. And then just lift these off of the, uh, little ears that are right there and, uh, right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that, uh, hose clamp down there. And then I will start taking the bolts out of the intake. These look like uh, like 10 millimeter bolts in here. There should be uh, five of them, if I remember right. Uh, Let's see, a uh, one, two, three. You can see down there, four, and then uh, five over here. Might have to take this belt and tensioner off. Uh, if I do, I'll let you know. Okay, the intake is off. I kind of changed my tune in the middle of it. Uh, I said I was going to undo this hose clamp and leave all this in with the car. Uh, I just decided to go ahead and undo it down here and pull that evap line off with it as well. So again, it is five bolts, one, two, three, four, five on the intake. As you work your way down, you're going to have a couple more things you need to take off. There's a wiring harness right that goes right here. Uh, this guy here. Actually, this is a mirror image now that I got this turned around. So that one there is that one. And that one there is that one. The most pain in the butt about this is the PCV, uh, the crankcase ventilation hose. That's this hose right here, uh, connects in here. So after you undo the intake and pull it back off of the cylinder head just a little bit, you're going to have to reach underneath there, pinch that, and pull that hose off uh, right there. Real pain in the butt. And another thing that's kind of a pain is the throttle body connector. you got to pull this red tab back and... Uh, push your thumb on here and pull this off and of course that is all upside down just about in that location down there so anyway there's the intake i'm gonna go and set that in the back all right let's get the uh let's get the fuel rail out of here it has a uh absolutely worthless cover on top of it uh to get that out just uh pop this connector out of this hole right here and then this thing just kind of sits on there uh with friction just pull that off Next, we will uh, undo some uh, wiring here. Let's go ahead and uh, unplug this. It's got a yellow safety tab. Pull that out, push this down, unplug the sensor. I'll go ahead and unplug each one of the uh, injectors uh, electrically underneath there. And then five bolts, one, two, three, four, five. Should be, uh, looks like 10 millimeter. Uh, pull those out, and then we should be able to pry this uh, fuel rail out. We've already got the fuel supply connection off that came off when we took the uh, fuel pump off okay so i'll do that next okay fuel rail is out inevitably uh one two or maybe even all four um fuel injectors are going to stay stuck in there looks like cylinders two and three uh stuck in there one and four came out uh don't worry about that once we get the cylinder head off we can we can tap those things out uh if we even want to um the other ones came out with the rail. All right, let's work now on getting uh, the belt and tensioner and all this stuff off on this side. All right, belt comes off pretty much in the usual way. Ford looks like they put a uh, 3 8 drive on the back. You're going to need a, a really skinny, uh, flat one that's not very deep to fit in there uh, just because of this brace and bracket over here. I just put a 15 millimeter socket on here. Uh, pushed it forward and slipped the belt off. Now let's get the whole tensioner off. 10 millimeter bolt there, one on bottom. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. I went ahead and jacked up the car, put it on some jack stands, and I have the wheel liner out. Okay, pretty self explanatory to get one of these out. Just follow uh, some bolts around. There's a couple underneath here um, where my figure is right there. Just go around here, pull these out around here. Uh, there's a lot right here, bolts uh, that go through the arch trim. 
as well as the fender splash shield here. Um, pull all these bolts out. Got some underneath as well that you're going to have to get to. And then uh, some on the frame inside of here. Once you get those out, uh, just finagle this out and put it off to the side. If you haven't dealt with a stretch belt yet, you're about ready to see one. Uh, in order to get the belt out that we were just messing with upstairs uh, or up top, um, this is a stretch belt. There's no tensioner on here. It is just on here by tension. They're kind of hard to get on and off. You have a couple options. You can either replace this belt and just go ahead and cut this one. Uh, or you can get a pry bar underneath here while also turning the crank pulley. I recommend only turning this clockwise uh, so it goes with the engine. Um, and then uh, finagling this thing off. That's what I'm going to try to do. If I can't do it, I'll just cut it. All right, this seems to be working. Since I really couldn't do this, uh, unless I put the phone on a stand underneath here, and even then you might not be able to see it. Just kind of got a pry bar up underneath there um, and started cranking the engine over clockwise. And this thing is going to slip right off. I'll get right back with you. Voila, it's off. You'll have to excuse the noise in the background. The neighbors are doing some tree trimming. But anyway, there it is on the ground. All right, now let's look up underneath here and uh, get this other belt off the rest of the way. Okay, belts are off. Let's go ahead and lock this thing in uh, its timing position. Uh, I believe it's top dead center. Um, let's go ahead and remove the uh, crankshaft position sensor right here. Looks like we got a couple eight millimeter bolts. Let's get this off. All right, that's off. And make sure that you pull the wiring harness out of its place up here. And I just put the bolts back in where it goes. Before I go any further, and before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil in this thing. And while the oil is draining, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a uh, timing kit you're going to need. I'm going to link this, a link to this exact one down in the description below. I recommend this one because the tool we're about ready to use is actually metal. Some of these come with a plastic one of these. No bueno, I don't like that. Uh, but anyway, this is going to lock the, or tell us when the pistons at top dead center for timing. And then this piece is going to actually lock the flywheel once we remove the starter and we'll be getting to that shortly. But anyway, a link to this is going to be down in the description below. The oil is done draining, so let's go ahead and start setting this up to get some of these timing component, uh, timing tools on to lock this thing in its timing position. You don't have to do this right now. When you take this thing apart, you can just... You can just take it apart but it's gonna have to be locked to go back together so I might as well do this now and get it set up to go back together even though it's not even all the way apart yet so first thing I'm doing here is I've got a wrench on the intake uh, camshaft on the back here there is a adapter to fit into the vacuum pump and it is a h17 so this is a 17 millimeter uh, hex Basically, you get this in here and you turn this out by holding that and then using a ratchet and loosening that. Let me, uh, let me get this out the rest of the way. Okay, that's out. You will notice that there is a slot in that camshaft and difficult to see because of its length. Let me see if I can get over here. There's a slot in the exhaust crankshaft as well. Those will end up needing to be parallel on the compression firing stroke. So to get to that... Uh, you got to look at these lobes over here. Uh, we're a little bit past it. It's about ready to go on to its exhaust stroke. Uh, sorry, it's about ready to go on to its exhaust stroke back here. So I'm going to turn this engine over almost 360 degrees, not quite. I'm going to stop it when uh, this lobe is facing straight up. That'll be really close to top dead center. And then I'll show you uh, something down below. Okay, the exhaust lobes are almost pointing straight up at noon uh, that means we aren't quite to top dead center yet this should be uh, you know kind of pointing at me and this intake should be pointing at about the oh I'd probably say 11 11 30 position it should be at the 1 1 30 uh, position as you look at a clock uh, I'll show you that in just a second but the reason I'm stopping before I get to total top dead center is because of this Back underneath the car, there it is, this uh, 10 millimeter uh, bolt right back here. I'm going to pull that out. Okay, that bolt is out, and now I'm going to install this. I'm going to be showing you this out of the timing kit. That's going to go in that hole. And there we go, it's installed. So now, 
I'm going to turn this crankshaft pulley clockwise and it'll probably only go like an eighth to a quarter of a turn, maybe, maybe 90 degrees and I bet you it's going to stop. So let me try doing this just holding the camera. Oh, stopped. That's what I wanted. Once I get this timing cover off, I will show you why that stopped right there. Okay, but I, I'll bet you right now that our lobes for the camshaft are lined up. Let's go, uh, or not the lobes, the, the lines for the camshaft are lined up. Let's go take a look. Here are the lobes that I was talking about. See how they're kind of like almost facing towards each other? That means that this thing is right on its compression stroke. It'd be basically firing right now. Okay. And on the end here, let's take a look at these lines. Look at that. Pretty much uh, level with the cylinder head. And same thing with the exhaust one over there. That's what we want. So right now there's no sense in putting on the tool to lock the camshafts because these are going to come out here in a few moments. The starter needs to be removed because we are going to now lock the flywheel in position. Okay, so let's remove this starter. It looks like we got a 10 millimeter nut on the top here holding a little bracket on. Probably the same thing on the bottom. Then underneath that I bet you there's a 13 millimeter nut that'll pull the whole stud out. And same thing on the other side then we can pull the starter out. Let me do that and get back with you. Okay, the bracket's off, but it's slightly harder uh, than it looks to the eye. Uh, there are three electrical connections, one there, one right there, and then another one here that uh, push into that bracket. And then what's hidden that you can't see is there's a auxiliary water pump right here. And that bracket also mounts to this stud and also to a stud in the transmission pan. I'm pointing at it right there. Uh, so that's a 10 millimeter nut you got to get off there then you can get the auxiliary water pump off now we can get to uh, This 13 millimeter bolt there and this 13 millimeter bolt there I'm gonna just pull the starter out and uh, Kind of set it down over off to this side. There's no need to disconnect it and pull it all the way out We just got to get it out of the way and down there Get right back with you. All right. And there's the starter out. You can clearly see the flywheel down there I just put the starter right here. It's just kind of, you know, sitting right there. No need to disconnect it. Now what we got to do is get the flywheel lock tool on. That is this guy right here. We're going to install that. You can either use the starter bolts to put this in, or I, I'm opting to just use some spare M10 bolts I have. They're just easier to work with. Let me get this on and show you what that looks like. Okay, tools installed. I don't know if I'll be able to get this mirror around to show you. Oh, yeah, look at that. You see how that tool is right there into the teeth of the uh, flywheel? That's what locks it. Pretty simple, very effective. Now that we got this thing locked, let's go ahead and zip this bolt out, get this crankshaft pulley off. This is a 21 millimeter bolt. And the crankshaft pulley is off. So I just used a uh, impact uh, on this thing to zip it off. You know, just real quick, I need to admire how clean this engine is. It does not leak a drop of anything, and it just looks brand new. It's really clean. Anyway, time to get this uh, timing cover off. And before we do that, there's a few things we got to do. There is a power steering pulley up here that's got to come off because it's in the way, and I'm going to pull this belt tensioner off. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, put a jack and a piece of wood underneath this oil pan to support the engine and remove the uh, upper mount. So let's move uh, up top. Actually, just before uh, jacking this up and uh, taking this mount off up here, let's go ahead and get this uh, power steering, I'm sorry, water pump pulley off. So I'm, I'm just stopping, it's got some holes drilled in the pulley. I'm just stopping it with an extension right there and there's uh, 10 millimeter bolts on there. I'm gonna get those off right now and get this pulley off. We got the engine supported by the oil pan, block of wood, jack right there. And up top, we'll just start pulling this mount off. These are uh, 18 millimeter nuts. Zip those off. Then you got a couple 15 millimeter bolts. One down there, one over there. Zip those off. All right, now that the mount is out of the way, I'm going to take this pulley off right here. I'm unsure if it bolts through to the block, but just to be sure, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take these uh, 
three 13 millimeter bolts here out. And I'm gonna go, go around the whole outside of the timing cover and remove all these 18 millimeter bolts. Just go all the way around. And then I'm gonna pry the timing cover off. All right, and here is the timing cover. Just going around here. I uh, pretty much put the bolts back in where they go on the timing cover, albeit upside down. Uh, on the back side is some strange bolts where you got a couple nuts on here. There's a, a bracket that holds an electrical component. I think it's a changeover valve. I didn't even really look at it. Just took it off. Uh, and then there's a one just like it up top, uh, but there's no nut on that one. Then you just go around here, a bunch of 8mm guys going all the way around. There are 17 bolts in total. Looks like uh, three of these with the studs here, and then 14 of the smaller ones going around the outside. You have the three 13 millimeter bolts. These they're they look like different lengths here, but they're all the same length. Uh, one more of these small guys will be right in the center, just underneath the uh, pulley, and then this one is a little bit longer. And unlike the Discovery Sport, on this one, it actually put a, a different head in there. It's a male Torx, where it inverse Torx uh, socket. You're going to need to get that off. And then you just, uh, there's some pry points where you'll, uh, where you'll want to pry this thing off. Now, be, be careful. This thing is really glued on there. So take your time and just work it off. Okay, now that the timing cover is off, let's get the timing components off. I'm going to start with taking the tensioner off down here. It looks like it's a couple 8mm bolts, followed by the tensioner arm, followed by the uh, static arm over here. And I'll just pull the chain off and set that off to the side. I'll pull these uh, actuators out here for the variable valve timing, and then we'll pull the uh, camshafts out of here. That'll be next. There's all the timing components off, and then took the variable valve timing actuators out. After you do that, take this bridge off. These are 10 millimeter bolts, and then slowly crack and pull out all the other cam caps. I'm going to pull these cams out, but I want to say this first, and this should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Make sure that you keep all of these cam caps in an order. Do whatever method you want however some people set it down on a piece of cardboard and label them do whatever you want just make sure that when we reinstall this all these cam caps go back in the exact same orientation exact same spot uh, that you take them off and the cams are out so like i mentioned earlier i've just been working my way around this thing starting over there and just kind of coming all the way around uh next thing up on the list was a ground wire back here there's a 13 millimeter bolt on the back side of this head right there and then after you get that bolt out uh basically the next thing in the way is the exhaust manifold so i'm gonna work on getting that out and i will get back with you okay all the exhaust nuts and studs are out there's probably a few different ways to do this. This is the way that I chose to do it was just to remove the heat shield and uh, pull the studs out so I'll be able to lift this cylinder head off and just leave this uh, manifold right here in place. Let me show you how uh, this is done. So right here is the heat shield. This is one of the harder parts is getting this out. Take a, the two 13 millimeter nuts off of the top uh, and then take this eight millimeter bolt out from underneath the car. Uh, and then you got to kind of mold this thing, bend it just a little bit out, uh, and then tap and pull this thing out the top. It does have some holes here where you could access it uh, to get to the other 13 millimeter nuts and then the studs, but uh, I just got it out of my way. So here are the studs, 13 millimeter nuts, like I said, and then the end of this, uh, you can pull the studs out by using an E8 uh, inverse torques uh, and then after you get the nuts and studs and heat shield and all this off uh, there we go and now it's time for the uh, the big moment this is a t55 torx head on these bolts I'm going to start on the outside here outside over there and then just work my way in and uh, detorque all these things once they are loose uh, then I'll bring out my uh, impact and just zip them out the rest of the way 
be back in just one second. All right. Not the hardest, not the easiest. Cylinder head is off. Let's uh, let's talk about a few things before I end this part one. Let me zoom you in here. This is what's going on with these engines. Adjust it there. Okay, you see this slot that is cut in between each cylinder? That is where the failure is happening. Normally it's happening in between two and three right here because the cylinder heads tend to like to... Uh, aluminum ones tend to like to warp up in the middle and valley out on the block. That's why 2 and 3 are the most prone, at least in the 1.5 liters. This is a 2.0 liter EcoBoost 2018. I guess the uh, 2017s through 2019s are susceptible and have this uh, slit. I guess it was an engineer's uh, idea on how to help a earlier problem that they were having with uh not overheating but not staying as cool as they wanted them to so they were cutting a slit to allow the coolant to to cross over dumb idea uh the newer blocks don't have the slit cut they just cross drill from over to here uh and then poke out this other side still a dumb idea in my opinion you're weakening the cylinder wall but whatever um let's take a look at the uh cylinder head gasket here is the cylinder head gasket you can see here in the center where these uh, holes are for the uh, the slit to allow that coolant to move over there. And it makes this area, this ceiling surface right here, uh, really thin. You can see how there's still a lot of ceiling rubber on the gasket here, but it's just completely gone here between cylinder one and cylinder two. Pretty much the same thing on cylinder two to cylinder three. And three to four over here looks uh, pretty toasted as well. That is where our problem is. Okay, I have a new one of these coming here pretty soon. This lasted 60,000 miles, but still, it should be a better product than that. And here's the bottom of the cylinder head. If you look at these, uh, look at these exhaust valves here, uh, how they're they're just coated versus uh, the other cylinders. You can definitely tell uh, that cylinder one was having a problem. Um, so we'll be cleaning this up. I've got to get a few other things done. I've already tapped out one of the fuel injectors, if you remember earlier, two and three got stuck in there. Real simple way to do this, if you're careful, we'll just take a like a four millimeter uh, socket, put it on that fuel injector right there, and then just tap it out, lightly tap it out. That's why it doesn't matter if they stay stuck in there if you're going to be pulling the cylinder head off. Okay, one last tip. Don't forget to do this before you flip a cylinder head over. These are the lifter buckets right here. And they are solid buckets in this engine. That means they don't adjust with the uh, oil hydraulic pressure uh, to take up the valve lash. So you want to line those up in order, just like you did with the cam caps, to make sure that they go back in in the exact right spot. You want to always do that with any engine anyway, but uh, it's especially true with this one, especially important. Uh, because these things, they, they, I think they got a number on the bottom of them. Yeah, you see this? They're different sizes. This is uh, some numbers down there. These are the same here. Oh, well, here you go. Here, this one's different. The other one was 382. This one's 362. They're a little bit different sizes. Make sure that you uh, put those back in the same spot that they came out of. Okay, that's it for part one. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two coming up real soon. We're going to clean this up. Clean the cylinder head up, get a new gasket on here, and put everything back together. See you next time.